feeling, right? I'm, I'm talking to you right now or to them. So, hello, Tal. Very nice to see you today. We are live on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube pages of uh, Startup Moldova Summit. Thank you so much for uh, uh, having this initiative, this beautiful initiative to, to host this training. We are uh, sure that this training will be very valuable for our startups. Uh, let me introduce you uh, just a few words. Tal is um, a guru in the startup world. He has a great experience in uh, pitching and moderating events uh, worldwide. So uh, today, um, again, thank you so much for uh, uh, having uh, us today in, um, in this training. The floor is yours. Please be free to uh, share your experience with us. Uftim, that's right, I need to say, Uftim. So, uh, for the introduction. And uh, I hope, uh, so right now we have the startups that are sitting with you and others which are now somewhere online, hopefully. Yes? Yes, right. Okay. By the way, do, do we know how many so far came uh, online? Six. So far we have six, um, six people that are watching us online. Okay, so um, everyone, this um, um, session today uh, would be very uh, beneficial for you uh, should you participate and uh, share any questions that you, you might have, um, any thoughts that you uh, wanted to share and, and ask and know more about them. Um, as my Romanian mother always says, I know everything. I don't need to show more for myself. So I know the material. I don't need to uh, train myself more, but I'm definitely here to share with you and give you the, I would say, the most relevant and precise answers for your questions in, in maybe even the sensitive topics. But I will start and then you can, of course, uh, join and ask. I think my comment uh, thing is also open. So should you write any questions, I will do my best to answer. So the topic that we're going to talk uh, about would be uh, your pitch. And uh, you're going to do your startup pitch next week. Uh, Catalina is going to moderate that part of the event on the uh, Moldova Startup Summit on the Friday. Um, we, I'm not sure if you did any first kind of investigations to know who is going to be in the audience or who you're going to talk to, but I will take a step back and discuss, first of all, your presentation part. So your presentation in, in the way of slides that you have, I would um, recommend you the following order. And I think you have five minutes to pitch. And then it will be five minutes of what we call the Q and A. Is it? I'm not sure if it's three or five minutes. Catalina, do you know? Three minutes. It's three minutes. Okay. okay. So I want to tell you all that the most important part in any pitch that you will do will make will be to make sure that the part of the slides of problem and solution are presented the right way, meaning there is no essence, there is no reason to continue if your problem and solution are not presented well. They should be the most important two slides, and they're supposed to be two slides of your presentation. From saying, hi, my name is so-and-so, to ending the slide of the problem, in a three-minute speech, I would recommend that you don't talk more than half a minute. After the problem, you should speak about the solution. Solution should be about a minute and a little bit, but not less than a minute. Remember, we all have problems, and everyone came not to hear more problems. They came to hear solutions. And more so, they came to listen to technology solutions. This is why you need to emphasize on that. If I would not ask you to do your pitch, you, you need to believe me. You all pitch the other way, meaning you will pitch more than a minute from saying hello to ending the problem, and you will speak 20 seconds 
about the solution. And this you need to change. That's number one. Number two, you must end the slide of the problem with showing the money on the table, meaning we think that this problem is ta 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 and the reason this problem is not dealt with the right way or still not resolved results in money on the table. So you need to talk about so-called the opportunity with talking about numbers, which is money on the table for your investors to see and get interested in. Then the expectation that the next slide would be the solution. The solution will touch exactly all the points that you discussed as lacking when you presented the problem. It sounds very easy. It is easy when you think about it the right way. So when you present the solution, solution needs to touch and explain how you guys going to take all the money that you left was left on the table to your pocket and to your investors. On, the, uh, on that part, on the solution, you must speak technology. Now, I recommend that in the three minutes, no one opens a demo. Demo never works, so don't go there and you don't have the time. What you need to do is you need to speak technology and should you want to present in a kind of a mock-up or during your presentation um, what your technology does, please delete all those. Okay, now I open, I put username, password. Forget this. Go to the essence, to the essence, to, to what we call in Hebrew, tachles, the bottom line where the money is. This is what you need to show. So you have the opening slide. Please don't put your phone number and details. That's not a university project. You should put your, your startup, uh, put the name. Maybe you have a slogan, slide of problem, ending with a money on the table, solution, touching all the points of the problem. Then you go on. Now, the next slide I would recommend you to have would be your target market. Be aware, first of all, your market divides into customers and users. Customers are the one paying. Users use. Like you use WhatsApp, you don't pay. So you are not customers. You are users. So first of all, detect and understand who are you talking to, customers and users. That's number one. Number two, the fact that your potential market is 2 billion is not interesting unless you can explain what is your addressable market. Addressable market is the market just outside the door here, here in your neighborhood, on the same street. You should show your listeners that you know how to go to market locally near you. Then you can speak about the faraway ones. Otherwise, again, you're wasting time. Then after what you uh, present as target market, you would go to business model. Explain again and again, business model equals how you're going to earn your money. Simple. That's your business model. All those who want to present a B2B, that's not a business model. Freemium is not a business model unless you explain what's free, what's premium and how much. Now, I don't know how mm, developed or how mature all the startups are. For the, let's say, early stage or young ones, that is still kind of a challenge. But for the more mature, the expectation is, of course, that you will have a business model. Okay? So you need to explain it in a simple way, preferably with numbers. And you don't need to exaggerate too much. You can exaggerate little about the potential and how you're going to reach the market. You can go in the next slide and go to market. You can go the next slide with competition. I would advise the following. If your competition is not that clear and obvious, I mean, jump, skip it. Don't talk about competition. But if, you're, if it is clear and is known that in the, in the uh, cluster, in the technology that you're developing, there is very clear competition and a lot of it, you need to touch it. The way you will present your competition would be First of all, not more than four criterias, 
over here four not more and competition you are first and then maybe two competitors not more and when you get to this slide this slide needs to fly within no more than 15 seconds meaning you don't need to go category by category you just take two criteria, two out of the four and you talk about them the best ones okay no need to mention your competition what they do how they do you don't work for them you work for yourself this is why this slide needs to fly very fast then you would go for your team slide team slide first of all presented in a way that all the team is here not here and here the fact that your uh, team has a, a a graphic designer no offense it's not part of the of this slide this slide of team shows first and foremost the co-founders and if you are three co-founders there is no founder and co-founders everyone is co-founders and then after co-founders your role a ceo and there is only one ceo a cto and a coo or cmo should you be already outside in the market okay again needs to make sense this is how you present the team if you have an advisory board with renowned names there is definitely a place to uh, show them the one thing you should always take into consideration the most impressive thing about a startup would be first of all its team and then the technology so you cannot show your slide which is kind of towards the end and say okay i have like two seconds and i kind of mention myself and maybe another person and that's it you should give the respect to your team and you need to present them the right way as same as you would present your advisor board otherwise don't show next slide should be your current status where you are right now in way of showing accomplishments the fact that you woke up in the morning is not relevant the fact that you have a presentation is not relevant but if you have a patent that is relevant if you have spoken to potential um, customers with big names very relevant if you validated problem and solution in a orderly fashion and you can show for yourself not just say i did but you can say i have launched with this customer i have tried it with this uh, institution then show it so that's about your current status then at the end since you're probably presenting to um, hopefully investors of course you need to present what you're currently looking for meaning what's your what do you expect to raise money for when you speak about that slide you need to speak about how much money you intend to raise in what ways are you going to use it for what you're going to use it now let me tell you all startups say and fall on the same uh, 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 answer saying i need some for r d and some for marketing i will explain a startup usually is two people at the beginning and then maybe three and four if you are the ceo then your responsibility before anything else would be marketing of course and fundraising not management because you are managing your partner he does technology you have no clue about technology hence you're not managing him this logic should lead you to understand that marketing is part of your role it's not that you're going to take the money for marketing you're going to take it in way of salary and what you can do with your salary is do the job that you need to do as ceo the reason that you do it for r d is because the one person who is the cto is not enough even if he's full stack to develop the entire solution you would need servers you would need the front end you would need back end you would need cross platform you would need ios you would need android you would need things this is why this is why you say i need for the development and another piece of advice is that investors love to know that any cent any lay any run that they put into the company will go for r d because r d is what develops the asset of intellectual property of it of patents of technology this is something tangible they can touch your good intentions don't count 
then you end your presentation and you should end your presentation with an action item uh, not uh, and uh, thank you uh, no it should be something like the 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 high end of everything like your high part not your lower okay i got through this alive and i'm done and i have no much no more energy and thank you and bye but say something that is welcoming maybe you want to meet us after in our booth maybe join our journey maybe uh, trust us join our team because so and so it needs to be something that resonates that echoes that shows your presence by the way it is recommended that when you speak you will speak in a way that you say thank you for listening i was or i am or my startup is this name my name is so and so and end it uh, like that in your so so far this is about the presentation part if you have any questions just yes no let me know we have a question here so um uh -huh. okay i'll try uh can you hear me now i hear you but i hear you with an echo okay <laughs> um now i have two questions first of all how important are the financials do you present the growth the costs the i don't know marketing budget and so on in a table mm -hmm. and the second question is do you need to present the uh share not the share the equity that you are willing to give um in instead of uh, uh investment thanks very good questions i will go for the second one because it's easy answer is no you don't you don't present you don't discuss and you don't negotiate what you will give for any investment that's not the place to negotiate i mean speaking about this would be like you meeting someone on the street and asking and telling hello my name is tal how, by the way how much do you earn people don't talk this way okay same here no one will start negotiating with you now i i want to help you a little more because sometimes after the presentation you get a little bit um kind of agitated and nervous because now starts the q a i want to tell you and that's my advice to you catalina in my demo days and i've done only about 500 of them no one asks questions the audience meaning the jury or the investors are there to give good feedback so i'm telling you guys relax relax because catalina is going to handle whomever wants to not ask you but give you a positive feedback only positive feedback of course she will she will not say to someone asking sorry no this is what i would say but sadly i'm not moderating it but i want to for you guys to get a positive uh, uh, feedback in a way that says to you maybe you should be more aware of something or look at something not in a way of do you know this startup i don't know and i can ask you 900 questions you don't know so it's not a way to kind of embarrass you or to let the investors feel that they are important and they know more than you they know more than you they know they know more than you so there is no kind of a competition here okay so you can relax on that uh going back for the, for the first one about the the financials okay again i'm not aware how mature the startups are there of course if you have or if you're doing already a kind of an MRR, it's very impressive. If you already launched your app, it's very impressive and you should talk about it. So if I have an app already in the air, definitely I will end my presentation by saying, hey, don't forget to download our app and use it. That shows something for you. It shows that you have done much more than others and you kind of survived part of this long and 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 nightmare kind of a, of a way that you're all walking as startuppers which is very difficult okay so yes if you are doing an mrr show it don't apologize i want to repeat and make it clear to you you don't stand on stage to apologize and you know what because with all due respect to the investors you're doing something they didn't do and maybe they even cannot do you did 
the fact that you need funding, this is part of the way of building a, a business. It's not that you should feel like beggars. We need your money. Remember this always. When you pitch what you pitch, it's not up to you to say, sorry, this was not my last presentation. Sorry, I did better. Sorry, I'm a little bit under the weather. I don't feel well. It's a waste, a waste of time. It's not even respectful to speak this way. So forget it. You are not there to make friends. You are not there for everyone to go, yeah, amazing there, because you're not kids. I hope you're not kids. You are there as business people, men and women. And you are there to present something that could be potentially grow into something that whomever will join your journey and invest money in you will get to enjoy a ton of bun in return. So this is how this works. And as all investors know, they give you money, they receive equity. This is clear. And you know why there is no need for you to say what is the equity that you're willing to, to give? Because it just doesn't matter. And I can show you this in an example in two seconds. You can tell me, Tal, listen, right now we are raising 350,000 euros and we are willing to give you 8%. I would listen to it and I would say to myself, you know what? I heard you, but I want to give you for the 8% 100 you said, well, what happened to the 350? I said, oh, you want to speak 350? So let me tell you what I want. This is the kind of discussion you have. And if you saw probably the TV show Sharks, you know how it works. They stand there and say what they want. But we say the person with the money is the person with the decision. So no need to dwell into this. And you all know that the money is according to valuation. And since most of you have not done valuation, hence the money that you're requesting has nothing to do with the equity that you will give. But you need to remember is that every round of fundraising you will do, you will need to say bye-bye, arrivederci, to 20 to 30%. So all those of you who think they're going to raise, I don't know, a million and give 5%, forget about it. And that's aside from the fact that we are living in a recession time and the fact that you are living in Moldova, maybe not the biggest startup nation of the world. So you have some things kind of challenging for you to realize before saying that. So just tell me if I answered your question. Yes, the question was answered. So um, yeah, I see. I see the the shock face. So I know it, it kind of <laughs> was answered. Okay, da bine. More questions? Yep, we have another one here. So please. Hi. Is it possible to present all you said in three minutes? Of course. Is it possible? Yeah. I mean. Again, if you want to go on timeline, I think I described to you about nine slides. Mm -hmm. When I say nine slides, you need to follow in a way that your problem is a one slide, not three slides to speak about problem. And then your solution is a one slide, not five. Okay? Number two. And you should all listen to this and, and learn you are entrepreneurs. Well, I will make you more of an entrepreneurs, but generally you are entrepreneurs. You need to be super creative. The one thing you are not allowed to do in this event is to go over three minutes. But remember, you have three minutes after for Q&A. And if you are entrepreneurs, you know to be smart and whatever question is thrown your way is like a good politician to say thank you and answer something else. And you know what's the magic here? No one will say, hey, you didn't answer my question. It doesn't work like this. So it's not that you have three minutes to pitch. You have six minutes to pitch. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you all should have for yourself at least 
two subjects that you will share with Catalina two days before the event in an email writing to Catalina. Dear Catalina, during the Q&A, I request you to ask me those two questions. Do you understand? This is how you are keeping to be very polite. And Catalina, should there be time, maybe you will be very interesting. Very interesting would be that the, the, the audience, the investors, they start a dialect. So you need to answer them. You need to, you need to talk to them. But sometimes, definitely happens towards the end. There are no more questions. Like the investor had enough. Their heads is like Bob Sponge. That's it. They can't think anymore. So you you finish your, and you stand like that. And Catalina will go, okay, like an auction. Going first time, going second time, going third time, no question, thank you, bye. You say, hey, Catalina, I have three minutes. Ask me the two questions, and you should be smart enough to continue talking. Do you understand me? This is to teach you that if you will accept everything told you like it is, you are not entrepreneurs. And I'm telling you right now, we all as people, 90 something percent of what we know, we know because someone else told us, stop being like that. Start breaking the rules. Start being more creative and definitely more brave. Break the frame. Don't fight with Catalina. Don't do her uh, 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 angry faces if she stops you. You're not allowed. But in the time frame of the six minutes, you are allowed to do anything that you want. You can sing, you can dance, you can just stare at people, you can do whatever you want. You're allowed. It's your time. No one can tell you what to do. But don't do too drastic. Keep your clothes on. Don't do too, you know, be, but make something that people will remember you. Different than me. Listen, I come to moderate the entire day. I'm a comedian. I'm an actor. This is what I do. My, my joy is to stand on stage. Remember, first of all, it is not your party. It's Startup Moldova Summit party and your guests there. So you need to show respect. Second of all, it's not about how good you think you presented. It's how good the audience thinks you presented and how well and how understandable you are. This is why I repeat myself. Problem and solution should be knife sharp, sharp to the face, not need long sentences, not need to move too much with the hands, need to be clear, speak short, speak simple words. This is not how you should present yourself as being smart, is speaking too many words and things that, words that people don't understand. And I'm telling you, some of you will be overexcited and there will be some of you that will be, I don't know, get a, I don't know, black. It's fine. It's acceptable. I'm telling you right now, if you go on stage and you black out, Catalina will give you a one chance. If it doesn't work, we take you off the stage. We let the next one and we will bring you back after. But all of you will present the right way your three minutes. So relax. You will do well. You will be on stage. But it's up to you to do it in a rememberable way in a way that people say, oh, I remember him or her, and not because you're weird, and not because you fainted on stage or you went up and fell the stairs. That's not the way you want to be remembered. But you want to be remembered in a way that maybe you did not show rocket science technology, but you spoke well. It was clear to understand. Your business model makes sense. Your target market, your addressable one, is is ready you have already had discussion with it remember the biggest problem with startups one of the problems is validation and if you did not do validation not just asking your parents or your friends but you went a little bit beyond and you validated the problem and you validated the solution 
You should be able to explain it in a clear way and bring evidence. Okay? Again, this is not a competition of uh, showing slides. This is not a competition of spitting words. This is your chance. It's not even a competition. This is your chance to be remembered standing on stage live with video, with camera, with audience, okay? And go home happy with a positive uh, uh, um, impression, feeling good. Not because you did your best. Not because you did your best, because what you wanted and planned actually happened. Also remember, probably when you will be on stage, the microphone will not work. The presentation will not be displayed and your three minutes is running. You cannot be slaves of PowerPoint or Prezi or whatever. You should be able to say no problem and do your presentation. You ask me, that's impressive for investors. The fact that you did not lose your campus and you know where you are and you say, okay, I don't need the presentation. I am the presentation. It's my baby. I know to present it the best way is important. And I want to add to this that after or maybe before and after your three minutes or your six minutes, you need to be able to approach people. You need to do your homework. You need to know who is coming to the event. You need to know who you should connect with. You should have connected with them already. You should have prepared the show abstract and saying, hey, I'm so excited that we're going to meet in the, in the event. I'm sending you a short abstract with your photo. We will talk more when we meet. Maybe some of you can already schedule meetings. Don't wait. You don't need anyone uh, every, anyone's uh, approval. You're not babies. It's not up to Catalina or Natalia to run and fix everything. No. That's not, that's not required of them. It's required of you. So step up. Understand this is not a game. This is not school or university. This is real life. This is your opportunity, not just to speak, but to show and engage and make friends and grow your network and have a summary and do photos. Everyone likes a selfie. You do selfie with anything that moves and breathes. You do selfie. Definitely with the investors. Work on your showmanship. Work, practice on your showmanship. How, how, how to move, how to be, how to speak clear, to mention your name in a clear way, to mention your startup name in a clear way. But remember, probably people after the first time will not remember your name and startup name because they're going to see about 17 of you. What you need to be is that they will kind of make the two things together. Oh, she, yeah, well, she was very impressive. They will not remember your name. They will not remember, but they remember that you were impressive. Number two, remember, people remember numbers better than words. So if your slide everywhere should be a number, this is what people remember. They remember the 5%, the 96% better than what did you speak about. So get that. And again, talk clear, talk slow. You are going to be excited. Your voice is going to uh, uh, rumble. It's fine. It's fine. It's understandable. Most of you did not stand on stage in front of so many people yet and pitched a business and asked for money. So that's not something that you do every day. Any more questions? I think I'm talking to myself. Probably. No, that's me again, Olga. Ah. Sorry, I'll bother you with the questions today. Uh, two questions. First of all, do they need to speak about the exit strategy during the pitch? And no. second, <laughs> no, okay. Uh, and second, we recommend them to have additional slides. And if there is a question from the investor or Catalina, 
Sorry. No worries. Just a second. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. So, uh, would you recommend them to have additional slides, uh, like uh, secret slides? And in case they have a question, they can pull up, pull up the slide and say, yeah, by the way, I have this information on my additional slide that they are not presenting during the pitch, but might be presenting during the uh, uh, questions and answers. Okay, so w when you speak about hidden slides, um, there should be, um, let's say, a very impressive or very important information that you feel will be more rememberable or help you to explain uh, the, the question and not by you doing it by yourself. So, yes, you can have hidden slides, but even if you have hidden slides, it will not help you because you cannot show them. You're on a presentation mode. You finish your presentation, everyone goes clapping, Catalina takes the microphone and says, uh, thank you, uh, Olga, uh, for your nice presentation, and then turns to the investors and say, yes, um, any, any feedbacks, please. Okay, and then she, no one knows what they're going to ask, okay? But you will see that most of them kind of repeat the same question. Some of them will say, well, the business model was not clear enough. So the question is, what do you think that you will need more? What, what are the options? Uh, no one will tell you, listen, um, I don't know, the problem is not clear. Could be, but you don't need a slide for that. Or your solution is not clear. Then again, you don't need a slide. So probably the only time you think you might need a slide would be when it comes to financials. But no one will ask you financials more than, I don't know, understanding, for instance, pricing, if you would show what's the expected price of your product. You don't need to show, but if you can, it's impressive, okay? So I, I'm, I'm thinking with you, what would be those extra hidden slides that are not going to negotiate on the investment? They're not going to go into your uh, P&L or your, or, or your cash flow because your startup, you don't have a cash flow. And they will not drill into how much you pay rent because you're all bootstrapped and you don't have money for that or you're sitting in a one co-working place not paying anyway because you don't have the money. So think. So I, I, I would expect you to be able to handle all questions without having to say, okay, uh, um, whomever, uh, Katerina would need to explain... Uh, who is sitting on because usually what happens you finish your presentation and Catalina already told the team that they should the the production team you need to now go to the next presentation and make it ready so they already close your presentation most probably this is how we do it usually okay so there is not too much time i would say to investors first of all i will be honest in a way of saying if you don't know you don't need to say i don't know you should say, that is a very important point. I would appreciate meeting with you after and explaining further. That's the more mature way to, un to say, I don't know. By the way, it is okay to say, I don't know. You cannot know everything. By the way, also the investors don't know everything. Okay? But we show them respect. So, yes, I would say, I have taken note of your remark or I have taken note my team took note of the question, I will come back to you. That's mature. That's professional. And there is not one answer. This is not mathematics. It's not one plus one. It's a one answer. All answers, all answers are good and relevant if you know to say them in a respectful and professional way. Thank you, Tal. If someone else has questions, we have we still have like seven minutes left. Uh, I have a question. Well, uh, hi, Tal. Uh, you know, do you have some tips on uh, evaluating your company? So, like, uh, how how should a startup properly evaluate itself, and how should it yeah. uh, evaluate for the next round? Got 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 the question. 
got the question. Um, Katerina, by the way, can the screen remain like this, like I see them, or it cannot? Of course, yeah. So, so uh, my answer is like this. And I'm giving you kind of the thumb rules. Like I told you, every round will be about, let's say, 24 to 30% of equity. So I go to valuation. Usually, when we are talking about applications, we uh, estimate a value of a startup with, let's say, at least an MVP somewhere between 900K to two, two and a half million. That's kind of the neighborhood to begin. So the more mature you are, the closer you are to the market, the closer you are to uh, uh, your customers, the closer you are to first adopters, your value goes. This, of course, changes. Why? Because could be that in your region, such technology is estimated at a certain number, but this is used mostly in the cases when you say, hey, there is no one like me. So when there is no one like you, you take kind of the average. More important is to remember that when you talk about fundraising, well, if you have presentation and little bit, asking a $1 million or euros is kind of a joke. Unless maybe you did something in cyber. Maybe you have pitched your right. Maybe you were first place in Techstars competition. It's like saying, you know, that uh, uh, serial entrepreneurs, if, if I did as, a, in, as an entrepreneur a one exit, you can realize that for me to raise again is very simple. Why? I have to show for myself. That's credibility. So if an investor listens to you and he gets this feeling that you know what you're talking about, you talk in a mature way, professional way, you don't swallow the words, you go, oh. you talk, you explain what you say makes sense. And it's interesting for him, them, he, her, him, they, I don't know, this thing now around the world, everyone calls himself she, it, he, is, they. If they or him or she understands, then probably there will be more to discuss. No one, no one gets invested on them all day. Relax. No one gets invested in such events. You get the time to be called to talk. So what I want to take, was I clear? So I want to take it a one step and say, what happens right after? So we finished the, the 17. You got a standing ovation about your idea. Probably you tried to kind of hook up with most investors that you can. You did nice selfies. Why? Because now you want to write to them. Hey, thank you. It was amazing to meet you. Probably you don't remember me. Here is my photo. You and me together. It's a good start. Okay. Then you need to understand, not all investors invest in everything. Not all investors really have money. I know that's shocking for you. But they were invited. And for some reason, they th thought that you're going to have a good time and eat some uh, mamaliga and, uh, I don't know, mujdei. And, and brenza and, uh, I don't know, what, you don't have pukushata. So, uh, in, like in Bucharest. But they, they will eat a meaty day. So they thought that coming is fun. But they don't have the money. Or they're near nothing. Their, their fuel tank is almost empty. You need to know this. So it's not, hey, hello, nice to meet you, by the way. How much money do you have? You can't do that. But you need to approach them, should you ask me, in a whole different manner. Going to a potential investor saying, hello, so I need half a million. And I want to give you 30%. Not interesting. But if I go to an investor, you know what I tell? I say to him, listen, first of all, thank you for your time. I'm not interested in your money right now. What? So why are you here? I'm interested in your advice. And I know that a good advice from an investor 
will serve me much more with other investors because what would usually investors say to you? Like you go for a job interview. When you go to a job interview, what do you ask second question after your name? What's your experience? And the expectation is that you will have experience. How about you go to a VC or an investor who says to you, what's your name? Good. Um, who did you talk to? And you say, I talked to this guy and said, no, this, no, this, no, no. But if you did not speak about money, then you say everything was positive. He's considering it and you're speaking true. That's number one. Number two, if you speak in a professional, mature way and you, and you dress well, you smell well, your presentation is nice, you talk to the point. What do you think will happen? For sure, the investor will tell you, okay, let's talk about money. The only difference is he said it and not you. And now you're in a point of saying to yourself, should I persist this kind of show and tell him I'm not interesting? Or maybe, I, well, interesting you ask. Well, I, again, I'm not after the money right now because I don't feel I'm ready. See how smart that is. First of all, it's true because you're never ready. Second of all, it says to the person, listen, I'm not after your money. I want to show you in a professional way that I should get your money. But I want you to trust me and I want to build trust. You all know you don't jump to bed first uh, meeting. Date a little bit. Get to know one another a little bit. Don't sell yourself short. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you will do that. Yes. And will you do that? Yes. And, uh, no. The first uh, 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 hole that the investor will push you into is just a simple test. They will listen to your pitch and say, interesting. By the way, did you think about maybe developing that? And you go, yeah, of course, yeah, or immediately. And, and, and that, yeah. And uh, the market, you, you spoke about the European market. How about going first to the US? Well, it's a great idea. Let's go to the US. The one thing the investor tells you is, okay, 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 relax. You are not focused. I'm not going to give you my money to play with because you don't know where you're going. The right answer should be, thank you for your advice. I need to think it over. Right now, with the information in my hands, this is the way I thought to go. It's not about the advice you received. People like you to think for yourself and maybe get their advice, not to hear you say someone else advised me because why are you in the room? You just came to ask my advice. So be honest and say, I thought about it so. I have done my evaluation, my homework, but I'm not experienced enough. So thank you for what you need to get to give me. Be thankful all the time. Be thankful. Thank you for your time. I so appreciate it. You know, I was thinking about the whole night. I'm coming back to you. Number two, if you promise to come back with an answer, you come back with an answer. Number three, when investor tells you, talk to me, he doesn't mean you to nag them nine times a day the day after. He means take a breath. Give me a week or two. Then call me and write me and be nice to me. Don't be angry with me for not answering you. Okay? That's the mindset. Again, understand, this is not a game. This is not high school. This is not even university. This is real life and this is business. In business, you speak about money. Your intentions don't count. Your best and my best are different. So we don't talk about what we will accomplish, what we intend to do. How hard we expect to work. No, it's about facts. It's about deliverables. It's about KPI. It's about tangible KPI. It's not about, do you understand? You just need to nod your heads. Now we are almost a one hour together. My programs run from three months to six months. Think about having me every day in six months. What do you think happens with you guys? You are becoming a killer machines. This is what I teach. 
This is what I want you to come out of this session. Get your killer instinct out. I want to see claws. I want to see teeth. Teeth in smiling, not in eating. And claws. Be focused why you are there on the 17. Know who you intend to meet and make everything that you can legally to meet the person that you wanted. Be aware all the time. Eyes are on you. Especially men who like to dig in the nose. All the eyes are on you all the time. Be present in the room. Listen to what you're, you're, you've been asked. Answer the question. Don't start with a story and with an apology that you did not know. Did not, no one is interested. No one knows you a day before, a one hour before, a two minutes before you said hello. They don't know your history. They're not interested in your history at that moment. Come at your best. Dressed well. Drink. Eat. Take deep breath. Everything is going to be okay. You're not going to be there by yourself. Uh, uh, Catalina is there. Natalia is there. And definitely I'm there. And I'm telling you right now, no investor in the audience wants to pick up on me. They don't want to get me started. So understand, you have all the force on your side. We are making all you don't know. We've been working on this for, I think, two months or more. To give you to get you to the stage, you need to appreciate it the right way. You need to promote the event. You need to be thankful for the event. You need to be thankful for the audience, definitely for the investors and keeping in touch. Take yourself seriously. Prepare for the day. You have a whole week. Prepare yourself for this day. Come present. Once you come there, no friends. Killer instinct. No friends. You're there to make business. You are not there to socialize with your friends that you see every day of your life. Tell them, go away from me. Don't come near me. If you're a team, one takes this side of the room, the other takes the other side of the room. I don't want to see you together. You need to work the audience. You need to know everyone. Get photos with everyone. Concentrate on what you want to get from this day. You want money? Good. You want exposure? Good. You want uh, uh, partners? Good. You want first adopters? Good. You want marketing channels? Good. You want connection to somewhere else? Good. Because there will be people from the outside. Although I have Romanian citizenship, as you could have guessed, because I'm not here to, 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 to learn Romanian from you, my, my, my residence is Israel. And I don't need to tell you what's Israel, right? I mean, you all know. And you would love to come here because it's very warm weather, different than where you are right now. Okay. A very wealthy country with tons of startups. And when you think about it, here maybe the competition is much harder from where you are. Okay. And it's not only about the money. And you should ask yourself, you should ask yourself, am I ready to get invested? Do I know what to do with the money? Did I validate the problem and solution? Do I know? Because, you know, for some of you, it could be a surprise. You're going to get the money. And then what? And then what? If the investor does not, the investor did not put the money for him to manage the company. Your investors don't come to be CEO of your company. They come to give you the money, expecting to get 400 times on the money. You should be able to explain how, when, not to tell the world, you know, start up a risky business. So you, you took a risk. What do you want from me? What do you think? They will go away. What do you think? They're stupid. First of all, they will take your company. Then they will mark you and no one will talk to you ever. So think you're also taking responsibility with money comes responsibility, not just fun. All those of you who say, well, great, I'm going to take this uh, uh, investment and I'm going to earn 10,000 euros next month. Wake up. You're not, you're dreaming something that will not happen. Ask me, don't take a, 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 a euro from anyone. Make it yourself. Make it yourself. Build a business that you can actually take salary and enjoy. 
not be a slave to run after KPIs and give reports all day. Explain how you're going to meet the market. Explain how you're going to service your customers. And your customers, one day they love you, then they flip, and then they hate you. So also remember, you're like butterflies. You're born and die the next day. That's startups. Shh. Unless you build it the right way. Did I depress you enough or you need more? Am I just okay. reminding you, just reminding you that Romania last time I checked is 19. I will give you 20 million and Israel is exactly half. Israel has in every given minute about 8,000 working startups and raised 25 billion in 2021. I don't know the numbers of 2022 and did exits of over 80 billion dollars. So we probably know something and people are people wherever you go. Yeah, Catalina, go ahead. I'm so sorry, but we are out of time. So uh, we need to make a conclusion here today. Thank you so much. If you want to say a few words to encourage our yes. startups. How many do we have uh, online? Online, eight people. Good. So you can understand that a lecture like this in Israel will bring about 500 people. In Moldova, it brought uh, 14. Maybe I did not do good promoting. Um, I will say this. This is going to be a very good event and a very good exercise for all of you. Uh, we are leaving this line kind of open. Should you have more questions, uh, you can shoot them my way. Uh, Catalina, you can share my details. I would, first of all, advise everyone to get and connect on LinkedIn. Don't look for me in Tinder. I'm not there. But LinkedIn, definitely, so connect. A second of all, get ready. This cannot happen if you wake up in the morning and say, go ahead. You need to do preparations. And I want to wish you, everyone, uh, good luck. And I will be seeing you on the 16th. Yeah, we can't and then wait. the 17th. In Moldova. Thank you so much Good. and uh, see you soon. Thank you all of you. Bye. Bye-bye.